that's very important. I need to, I need to do that. That's, that's what I need. The P word, I need the P word. Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another episode of Reclaiming the Crown. In this video, or I should say this episode, I'm going to be just walking you guys through the last couple of weeks of tour. Um, we had one week off tour at Persimmon Ridge. And just kind of what I've been doing good, what I've really been sucking at, and how I plan to use this week in Tennessee and the next week prior to the first major of the year to try to make the strides that I see necessary uh, in order to get back to where I was. Also, 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 new lens today. So, I want to know what you guys think. Is this quality better, do you think? Is it worse? Uh, so what this lens allows me to do, it allows me to do this. Where now I can hold the camera with my arm, hold it, and talk to you guys. Before I was having to use my phone, I just felt like it kind of looked janky. And you could tell the quality difference from the phone to the nicer camera. So I got a lens that zooms to 16 millimeters, which I think could help. So let me know what you guys think about this. I can make myself look uglier, prettier, all types of stuff. Let me know what you guys think. I am filming with Kristen Tatar tomorrow. So I wanted to get out here and film this episode for you guys and see how this looks on the computer as well before I go use it filming with her. That's very important. I need to, I need to do that. That's, that's what I need. The P word, I need the P word. But you guys, what has been going on? I don't even know. I, sometimes I feel like I'm the best player in the world and sometimes I literally feel like I should be playing a C tier. And this week at Jonesboro, my, my actual thought process the first two rounds was okay. I haven't had a good first round in a long time so I just went out there and played very conservative and just tried not to bogey and make some birdies. I did that. The second round, I kind of had the same mentality of, okay, just try not to bogey make a few birdies and I, I did okay. I, I didn't do as good, but I still had a lot of positives there. The last round, I started the round with the bogey and it never got better from there. So I need to diagnose why sometimes I'm able to dial into that zone. And again, the scores I was shooting were never gonna win the event or were never gonna make me you know, back in the top five or winning in the tournament. But what it was gonna do is set me up to get top 15, top 20, maybe top 10 if I played a good round, and I just couldn't execute. So what happened? Well, I missed every single putt. It was a 40 minute hour win, but I played with three other guys that didn't miss every single putt. So it has to be a, a me thing, I would assume. Hey y'all, few things really quick. Head on over to gibsondiscoff.com to grab yourself a, a subscription box, some merch, and or our mystery box. What's gonna come in that mystery box? It's $65 for five premium discs. You're gonna also get a misprint disc. Go to our website, check out what that means. If you're not a member of our subscription box and you would like to be, use code Drew to save 30% your first order. Thank you guys so much. Let's get back into the video. So this week at Music City Open, new routine. I'm gonna wake up at 7 a.m. every single day. I've set my phone to limit my screen time for every single day. So if I run out of screen time and I'm up at seven, what do I have to do? I can re listen to a book, I could listen to a podcast, I could come out here and practice, I could go to the course and practice, I could play two or three rounds, I could work on creating some content. I could do a lot of productive things instead of wake up at noon because I tee off at 2.30, scroll on my phone until one, shower, get to the course, warm up for an hour and play. There's no question as to why I probably wasn't in the best mindset. And now, mind you, when I played my very best disc golf, I still wasn't like waking up at 7 a.m. and doing all this. But I think that the more time I'm able to focus on myself, on growing myself as a person, the more I'm able to grow myself as a disc golfer. And if nothing else, if I still get last place every single week, but I'm creating good habits of waking up, listening or reading books, listening to podcasts, practicing as much as I can, then I, I tried my best. And I don't think I'm washed up. I don't think my career is over. I think I'm going through a rough patch. I think that, you know, I came back from a surgery. I think I came back from not being, playing competitive disc golf for a long time. And I think simply I wasn't as practiced as I needed to be in order to go out there and execute. And every week, the, the, 
the baseline is getting better. Every week, my, my bad shots are getting better, better. Every week, minus the final round where I missed all the putts, my putt is getting better. And it's only a matter of time until it starts progressing. But for me to accelerate that progression, I'm willing to make sacrifices and drive to the course and practice two rounds a day. Or I made a promise to myself, play one round, and if my arm's a little tired, putt and throw up shots for one hour. I think that that's something I haven't done. Last week at Jonesboro, my practice, it was very windy, it kind of rained a little bit, and I didn't do as much as I should have done. And I realized that. And driving here this morning, I woke up at 6.30 in the morning to get here to be able to practice and get settled in. And I, I simply realized that I need to try harder. So what am I doing? I'm out here making a video with you guys, accepting I need to try harder, wanting to try harder, and hoping that that difference is going to be part of the reason that pushes me back to the top. So you might be asking or thinking like, back at the top, what does that mean? Back at the top for me doesn't mean what AB's doing where he went first, fourth, fourth, first, first. I never did that. At my best, I was ranked fifth in the world at one point. I was 1,039 rated. I was never consistent like that. I was never the guy that would go first, 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 fourth, never, I never did that. So for me to be back at the top, I'm just simply saying when I show up, 20th place seems like a bad week and having a chance to win or being in contention or being on lead card the first round isn't out of the picture. I haven't had that feeling in a long time. And that's what I mean by back at the top, the top for me. And if I exceed those expectations and I become as consistent as AB or as great as AB or Macbeth or Ricky or any of those guys, then that's fantastic and that's what I want. But I'm not trying to be delusional in the sense of like, oh, I want to be better than I ever was next week. No, I'm just trying to build a solid foundation to get to where I'm trying to go. Something else I notice when I'm on tour is that almost every single player has a really nice sidearm. And I don't, I'm not saying nice sidearm, but I want it to go 500 feet like Ricky's or like AB's. I'm saying nice sidearm to the point where from 200 feet, if the shot is going left to right, they can easily shape a shot there. In the final round, I believe I threw three sidearms and all of them were honestly better than I was expecting. I believe minus the wind, um, I would have probably birdied all three holes just by the quality of shot that I threw. Didn't have any wobble, flew straight, flew nice. So something else I'm be working on uh, this week, next week, and hopefully for the rest of my life, as long as my this stupid arm here stays healthy, is just trying to, whoa, that scared me, is just trying to throw a sidearm spin because sometimes the wind is going right to left to the point where throwing backhand on this angle isn't actually going to be conducive. And trying to throw like this with the wind doing this, it's just going to be really hard because the disc doesn't really want to go to the right. To where if I'm throwing sidearm, even though the disc is still beating, or the wind is still beating on the disc this way, at least the disc is trying to spin that way, of course. Then you can throw a disc that's going to skip and you can throw it low and control it. So another thing I'm going to try to work on is just these little touch shots here. Just to get my arm used to kind of that motion of just throwing, and again, these are my first three of the day, but overall, I think that this, this practice and this feel is really something that can help me save strokes, even if it's just from 150 feet and in. Hey, if y'all want to support me and support the brands that support me, head on over to infinitedisc.com. Check out my signature disc from Finish Line Discs. It's our Radiant Forge Interval. It's one of the best distance drivers I've used in a long time. If I'm not using the Boss from Innova, I'm using this. So make sure to go check it out. Also, if you just want to shop on Infinite Discs in general, use code DREWGIBSON10 to save yourself 10% off your entire order. Anything you want. It doesn't have to be my disc. It doesn't have to be finish line disc. It could be any disc or anything or bag or whatever. DREWGIBSON10 is going to save you 10% off. Make sure to InfiniteDiscs.com and support. Thank you guys so much. Here's hole one. Looks like about 235 feet. A little downhill. My problem with my sidearm, and the reason that I haven't trusted it as much as I should have or could have or wanted to, is I tend to do this. Where I just feel like my thumb, for example, just rolls over my hand. And what that does is I roll my wrist, so then I wobble the disc and it goes to the left. So I've been trying to work on popping the disc out there like that, to where I'm trying to launch it flat, which seems obvious, but even a player at my level, it, it's very difficult for me. So I'm trying to teach myself, be compact here, and just have a nice smooth throw. And this might not be it, but I'm gonna try to demonstrate. 
That was very nice. If I did that every time, I would be so happy. You guys don't even understand. Oh, okay. So then, new disc I'm messing with, the Castaplast Yarn. Approach disc by Castaplast. Pretty good. It's, it's more stable than the zones and maybe a little faster. But that's that release I'm talking about. That worked with that disc because that disc is so stable. But like, just like pop it over, it wobbles and it kind of goes to the right. Like, if I'm gonna be trying to use the shot in a tournament, I wanna feel like I am dialed in and that's just 235 feet, like I can't mess it up. And so we're working on it. For example, this is another situation where that new lens is so nice because I'm way over here my other disc is way over there. That's the disc that I said I went too flat and wobbled and it's actually parked, but that's a stability. But I can putt from here and the basket could be in frame and I don't have to move it. And it's just a much nicer experience. So I'm hoping that when we get in the editing room that I am able to believe that this looks as good as it does with my other lens because then we're gonna be in business. And obviously, if you're just tuning in, I'm a sidearm wizard all of a sudden overall there's a lot of positives to take from last weekend even though my goal wasn't met i didn't play as good as i would have liked but overall i i could see the the trend going upward and i just want to thank you guys for joining my journey hopefully you guys are enjoying uh these videos hopefully you're enjoying my perspective and the road back to reclaiming the crown thank you guys so much for tuning in make sure to check out my sponsors Infinite Discs, EV7 putters, swatch bags, greater half clothing, and then finish line discs, my personal manufacturing company. Thank you guys so much. Remember, only you can prevent wildfires. We'll see you in the next one.